Hi there. Sadly, we've lost our internet feed, and I can only think that one of the tiles has probably gone down. But I'm going to continue, and we'll upload it a bit later. <sighs> Let's talk blades. Let's start with blades. If you look, the blue housing, which is your deep cut housing, you will notice is quite a lot shorter. If you put them like that, you can see the difference. The deep cut housing has more of the actual blade sticking out. Now I'm going to load a blade. It could be one of these. Remember these blades are incredibly sharp. So, and it's magnetic, so you don't need to stab yourself too badly when you put it in. If you can see there, you can see how deep that blade is out. That is your two mil thickness that your blade can cut. So if you were cutting chipboard or something like that, that's how deep it would be. Now, the best way to see it, of course, is like that. Now, if you're using a regular housing and you've got it on number six, which is the deepest it can be, you'll see your tip is a lot less. So the general rule is, although we have lots of different color housings, the shorter housing is always your deep cut housing. You'll see in this section here, it's all the same. The difference comes in this section here. So blue is your deep cut housing. And normally blue blades would be your deep cut blades. Unfortunately or fortunately, with there being so many different brands, we've now got deep cut blades that have got red caps and yellow caps and light blue caps and green caps. So, it, I mean, I've even got blades with gray caps. It's just different brands, different blades, different things. So, it is unfortunately one of the more difficult things to do. But, if you look at the angle of your blade, you will notice that the blue blade, or the deep cut blade, has a much sharper point. Whereas it's actually a, a different angle completely and I'm going to upload the, the diagrams of the different angles of the blades. There are three angles. You get one that is uh, 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. So we'll upload those and give you a better understanding of blades a little bit later. Now when we were talking about setting of our blades, when we turn this down to one, there's very little of our blade sticking out. So in two means it'll be slightly more and three even more. What if you needed three and a half? Then you would put it in the middle. So that generally works for, for all of these blades. Now for this series of machines there originally was only a deep cut housing and a regular housing. Um, subsequently it wasn't a cricket brand there were other brands that came out and you got a pink one for fabric and you got this and I got that but you know what as long as you got these two you're doing okay now you also get a scoring housing which is a purple housing um, I unfortunately don't have one at the moment um, I've given mine to somebody to use and I can't remember who but it's not serious because if you keep your old blades, I just want to find an old blade before I damage a blade. I'm going to grab one of these blades. If I take my blade out and I turn it around, but don't do that with a new blade, with an old blade, you can actually make your own scoring housing. If you find that that's too sharp, just take a nail file or an emery board and just take that little tip away. But it works fantastically. And I promise you, price for all these extra things that we got, that's what we all did. So that's exactly what would happen. Let me find a plain piece of cardstock so I can show you what I just did there. If this was in my I'm going to move that out the way. I'm going to in fact put that back in upside down. Just one of those little hacks that we've got. I love crafters. We come up with all these weird and wonderful things. And if that was in my machine, you would actually see it embosses. Now if I'd had this on a mat, it would have been a bit softer. 
but it does work. So just something small to, to try out. Okay, so red blades would regularly be your regular blade. Yellow these days is supposed to be a vinyl blade. Um, we don't actually market these as a Cricut product. Um, the only reason I've got them is because I have the K&K machines and I happen to use these blades as well. Um, and then of course you get the premium blades. Now the premium blades are quite a lot more expensive, but apparently they, they last so much longer. Now you'll see it's a gold blade. The wonderful thing about Cricut, and this was actually one of the things that I loved about Cricut, the very blades that we use on this system, we use on the Cricut Maker. So they never changed our blade technology or our mats. What they changed is the ability of our machine. And that's what I liked. So if you have one of these, you can use the blades you've got in your expression, your expression to your imagine, your explore air, explore air one, explore air two, well it's actually explore, quick and explore, explore air, explore air two and your maker. They all use the same blades. The difference with the the expression expression series uses this housing, whereas the explore series uses a different housing. So if you were upgrading from this machine to the Maker or the, Ex the Explore series, you wouldn't be able to use these housings, but you would be able to use your blades and your mats. Now I'm not going to go too much into detail about the Explore series because we're going to cover that for a week like we did with the brother. Okay, so let's look at some more tools. Obviously you do get a pen holder. Now, the nice thing, and I have to tell you, it's quite a lovely thing, is that you can use the silhouette pens. I'll find my silhouette pens that are lying in here somewhere in my silhouette stuff, uh, which I've put somewhere. The silhouette pen actually fits into this machine as well. So do the silhouette tools, like your embossing tool. Now I'm going to just open this up for a moment and hopefully you can see I'm going to open this embossing tool always say they make these things child safe that's why we can't open them and it will fit in your machine and you can use it exactly the same way so you must remember a lot of the tools are interchangeable between the machines I mean the dealers and the brands won't tell you that. But you know what? When you're a crafter, you know we try all these stupid hacks. They're not all stupid, but we just refer to them as such. Now, the K, &K series also has a lot of these. The puzzle, the K, &K the silhouette one, two, three, and expression can use the extra stuff, but not the blade. The silhouette does not use the expression blade at all not in this series so i was hoping i actually have got somewhere i should have found what i've got the pen sets for my silhouette and for the life of me i have no idea where we put them i probably find my niece has been playing with them because she thinks they're terribly cute because they're cute little pens alternatively there are a lot of different types of pen holders that do fit. They're not necessarily Cricut branded pen holders. They are from third party companies. I'm going to show you a couple of them quickly. There's one that is actually a K&K &K one. It will fit and it will work. Only thing we have to do is we'd have to nip that off there because it's going to interfere. The pen holders so they came in all different kinds they came from different companies that made them I think these are all crafters who had husbands that were very clever um, this particular one is lovely insofar as this one's got a screw inside so you can put your pen in 
it in your machine and you can write with it. Now, some of the pens, somebody asked me yesterday, we were talking about the infusible pens. With these, I actually cut the pen in half so that I could put it into a pen holder. I'm trying to think which pen holder I put it into. Um, it, actually, it wasn't this one. But I'm going to show you another hack that works really well. So if you don't have a pen holder like this, don't stress. If you take one of the little rubber scrunchies that the girls use, those horrible, funny little fluffy ones, and you wrap it around here, it'll hold it sufficiently in the machine to be able to use it. Now this pen obviously has been standing up straight, so it's leaking. I'm not going to touch it. I don't want to get that ink all over my hands. That's infusible ink. And it happens to stain quite well. So there are lots of different pen holders available. This particular one worked with the, all these little pens. Now, a lot of times these pens are actually more expensive. So nothing is stopping you from buying the pen, using it on your desk until it gets to half. And when it gets to this point where it is half, you cut it and you will be able to do it as well. Now, again, you'll see where it fits in. It doesn't touch the top of the machine when the machine is on and working. And you would be able to draw. Now you must remember, with the older machines, there isn't a specific button you push to, to say draw. Whatever your blade would have cut, it will draw. So if you've got a flower that you were cutting and you want to draw the same flower, you put a pen in and you would do everything the same as what we did on the expression. Now we are going to cover the expression quite a lot over the next couple of weeks because it is a machine that a lot of people still have. There are still some in circulation and they are good standby machines. Um, this is my baby. I was very lucky to get this baby um, because she matches my table and you know we crafters are stupid. We want all these things. Let's talk about a bit of care of our machine. One of the things that does happen is the cartridges are tacky. Now, I don't know if it's because of the, the weather we have in this country, but if you scratch it like that, you can actually see the rubber coming off. And this, I hate the feel of it. What I have found works really nicely here is a little bit of baby powder or a little bit of um, cornstarch. And it takes that sticky away. So quite a lot of my cartridges actually have white powder on them. And somebody asked me what that white powder was. Well, that's what my white powder is. It is in fact so that my cartridge isn't sticky anymore. Because honestly, I can't do sticky. I don't like sticky. Now, I'm going to just close this baby up for a moment and move her out the way. Just a little bitty. Go. Let's talk about cartridges. Most of the cartridges, the original cartridges, came out and you got a cartridge, you got the overlay, and you got a little book. And your book will tell you everything about what is on that cartridge. It starts at the beginning and it'll tell you all about sizing, how to do what on with that cartridge. Now, if I wanted to cut this elephant and I look at my overlay, the red piece that is highlighted there tells you which sign it is. So it's that one. And if you actually follow these instructions, I promise you it cuts easily. If you're like me who can't follow instructions, it is however a bit of a challenge. Now, cartridges I'm going to cover in more depth probably Wednesday, Thursday this week, where we're going to talk about enlarging with the cartridge, getting everything the same size, relative size, as opposed to, so I'm not going to waste time doing it today. The small cartridge we learned about yesterday is from the Imagine, or the Expression 2. It doesn't work in any of these, and they really are just art cartridges. There are only two different types of cartridges. As you can see, I have lots of these. And basically, they will print paper. That is what's on these cartridges. And it works on, it, the 
expression 2 cannot print. So to utilize these cartridges correctly, you would need an imagine. The imagine will print and then cut whatever it is that you want to cut. Now each of them will have certain things on them that can be cut. We'll find one that's got butterflies or something. There we go. If you look, Laurie's Garden can cut butterflies and cages and all of that. So if you were using this cartridge in the expression 2, you would be able to cut these, but you would not be able to print them. In the Imagine, you would be able to print and cut, as well as print the papers that are included in each one. It prints a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, which is fantastic for us crafters. In the later years, when they started to almost do away with cartridges, well, not really, but in keeping the costs down, because the Expression 2 did not need the overlay, they started producing cartridges in smaller boxes. They were just the cartridge and the book. Now that is great because those cartridges still work in these machines, but you don't have an overlay. Now you get it, what they call a universal overlay and I will post a picture of a universal overlay to our group just now so that you can see what a universal overlay is. But for some of us that were unable to get universals, I couldn't get for quite a long time already. There is a two or three ways that you can do this. Now, if I take my cartridge and I love to fix, it's brilliant you go. And you just wipe out everything that is on here. Like that. When I'm finished and it's dried, I will be able to make my own overlay. Now the overlay is normally numbered 1 to 50 or 60, whatever it is. So I would just write those numbers. Now I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me you playing with the tippets. But I'm going to show you. If you look in the book, this is everything this cartridge does. It's a nice Halloween cartridge. And it'll still show you on the overlay what you've got to touch, F1, F2. So your cartridge, you would then rename your, or relist, rewrite on here. You would start with F1, F2, F3, F4. And it works exactly the same way. You would put it on your machine. The load and unload would be the same. All of that would be the same. Most of that would be the same. So you would really just go through those. If you're lucky enough to have a labeling machine, you could do it with a labeling machine. Um, I've done a couple like that, which I think, I think Jackie's got one. And I think my, um, my client Sharon's got one. There are a couple of people that I've done that for. It just takes a bit of time. So your universal overlay would have F1, F2. So if it said push F1, now, if you look carefully, it's showing you on here. Let me just get the... There, right there, the little green one. It's showing you that it's F3. So we would push S, which is that, plus the 3. And then it'll show you F1, F2. So it's just a combination of buttons that would create that. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on, on cartridges now because we've got some really interesting other things that we wanted to share with you. Obviously, if you're going to write on your cartridge, you're going to use a permanent marker. Well, not on your cartridge, on your overlay. If there's anybody that needs overlays, I have a whole box full of overlays. So if you need an overlay to create into a, an overlay, please just drop myself or Melissa a message. Um, when we're sending you a parcel again, remind us and we'll put one in for you. Um, they, we don't need them, so we're quite happy. I must have 50. So anybody that needs any, please give us a shout. All it'll cost you is either the postage or we add it to your order and it doesn't cost anything extra. Tools. My favorite thing. Tools. I love my tools. 
Now I'm one of those painful people, everything's got to be coordinated in colour. You'll notice that most of mine are blue. I do have one or two green ones in between mainly because I have hit the point of this one and it's got this tiny little hook there. I just loved it. So I opened a new tool set. When we're looking at tools, the most important tools that you need is a lifter. Now, for my first year when I didn't have the means and I couldn't get the tools for the machines because nobody in South Africa had them, I used a cake lifter and it worked. I had this funny long cake lifter, better than what a baker, so I might have the wrong terminology, but it was a long one with an orange handle and I stole out of my mother's kitchen. And it worked like a dream. Every brand has their set of tools, but you know what? Use the tools that work for you. I have silhouette tools, I have brother tools, I have puzzle tools, I've got cricket tools, I've even got slice tools. Um, I use what works. It doesn't mean because I've got a cricket I have to use cricket tools and I've got a puzzle I must use puzzle tools. Some of us are that pedantic, but you know what? I just work with tools. I work with what works for me. One of the things if you're doing vinyl that is a key piece of equipment is your basically your awl with a very sharp point and one or two of these that help you lift out your vinyl pieces when you are weeding. Now we did cover weeding yesterday very briefly. Again, we're going to do a layered vinyl project during the week. Um, hopefully the guys are sorting out all our camera stuff tomorrow so we won't have this problem with our live feeds. And of course, a good tweezer is always handy when you're a crafter. Our scraper. Now we know we use the scraper to remove dirt off our mold, off our bowls, excuse me, off our mat. Um, I'm going to clean this mat in a moment just to get all the bits and pieces off it. Um, one or two people missed our feed about mats the other day, so I've been asked just to very briefly just cover something again. So I'm going to just do the basic mat care again. Wet wipes. Alcohol free wet wipes. So don't use the ones that are for adult hands that have got the alcohol in and things like that. You want a baby wet wipe. Now this mat has got quite a lot of hair. As you can see Bella plonked her bum down on it and I need to get all that hair off. So to, in order to do that I'm going to start here in little circular motions and you will actually see the mat start coming clean. You notice how the hair is lifting? Now I'm not removing the glue, I am just removing the dirt and you're amazed how much dirt is on here. Because this mat isn't very very dirty I'm not going to do it in water. Um, if this mat was really, really bad, I in fact would have taken it upstairs, put it in the bath, let it soak. And what happens is the dust and dirt lifts off. The glue is on your mat. And if you look after your mat, the glue can be resurrected, for want of a better word. Um, when you rub with your finger like this, you can actually feel the glue. Here, there's nothing, and here you'll feel almost like little bump, bumps, and that is your glue. Water will not damage your glue. The only thing that will damage your glue is an alcohol base or if you scrub too hard. Now, I have mats in the studio that are two and three and four years old. Um, I don't throw mats away because they can be re-glued and we will do that again in the, the weeks to come. So, all I'm doing now is I'm taking off and you're going to really see where I've cleaned and where there's dirt. So I'm just going to wipe this clean and then I'm going to just let it dry naturally by itself. I don't use a heat gun to dry mine. I'm a little bit nervous of putting the heat on my glue and doing damage. Um, I see some of the American ladies have done that. Um, me, I, I'm not in that much of a hurry that I need to use the, the heat gun to dry the mat off. Now one of the wonderful things about the mat pack that we found 
It was so kindly shared with us by one of the other dealers, the Silhouette dealer, Robin, Sippy Sisters. Um, and I have to tell you, I think it's the best hat we've ever, ever come across. Now, because the expression does not run with an auto blade, this hack will definitely work for your machines. You could do this on any of your mats. Um, I'm in fact going to even do it on my maker's mat this week when we start playing on the maker. Um, it works like a dream. It is only with the auto blade that we picked up a slight problem because of the blade working out the depth um, and the setting. Now the auto blade is wonderful. I have to tell you it's fantastic. Uh, Silhouette and Brother both have auto blades which I think are fantastic. The Cricut Maker Series Express <laughs> Explore Series don't have an auto blade but the software has all the different types of materials. So you would say I want chipboard and it will automatically set the machine to the right depths and pressures. If it didn't cut correctly you can adjust it. You can have slightly more pressure, slightly less pressure. That we're going to cover more in detail when we're busy with the software. Now, we are going to do... I just want to let it dry. Okay, us. I can't even say it's our secret hack because I've been raving about it all week. I'm using clear vinyl. I'm actually using the Avery Dimension brand. I believe that Macy's do have a clear as well. I had mine pre-cut and we now fondly refer to them as mat savers on the feeds and blogs and things I'll be talking about. This is the other golden tool that you really need, a brayer. It doesn't matter what brand your brayer is, but boy is it wonderful for applying things and getting it to stick. Now what I've basically done is I have applied my clear layer and when I remove them, the backing I have a very tacky mat again. The nice thing about this is you can you can replace the this every couple of weeks it wouldn't actually make a difference so sorry I have somebody that has just arrived so I'm going to need to cut this feed short for a moment. Hi, sorry about that interruption but we had people arrive and unfortunately, as you know, we have to seat them. And then we had load shedding in between as well. So yeah, we, we're finally getting back to what we were doing and talking about. Okay, so we've put our, our mat saver on here. Now, there are one or two ways that you can use your mat. I want to find my corner where I can lift my... Oh, come on. Now what I do is, once I start using my mat now, I don't keep this paper on it. I in fact use my proper protective sheet that comes with my mat, um, which is a sheet that looks like that. But if you haven't got a protective sheet anymore, and you now still need to, to keep this sheet, because the Avery has the lines in where it comes apart, you can either use masking tape and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to make this my back and I'm going to just put a bit of masking tape to stop my mat saver from coming apart of course my masking tape as you can see is doing its own thing like most things in our house let me just get it or you could even take another piece of vinyl if you know if that was a major issue okay I'm just now if you cut through your mat and your mat is damaged on the other side you can do the exact same things what I'm doing now So if you've cut through your mat, like we've done on our one purple mat, you just use plasters, we call them like mat plasters. Um, if you're lucky enough to have nice fancy paper, um, tape, you could use that just to make it look pretty. But 
if not so this what I'm doing now is really just to keep this piece of almost like wax paper that's on the vinyl now so I could have actually just I mean if we want to really get technical and fancy and all those good things now when I want to take that off And I would stick my paper on the same way, remembering your mat is now going to be fairly sticky. So we would cut. And the easiest way to remove your paper is like that. When we pull it the other way, when we put paper down and we cut it, and we pull it this way up, we tend to damage the actual paper. See what we've done to the paper? It's gone round. So, if we had placed it down on the mat, cut it, turned it over and bent our mat, we'll get it off far better. Now, the logic of putting all the tape and plasters on was clearly so that I could, when I'm finished, put that back on my mat and store my mat like all my others. Now, we always suggest that you store your mats hanging up which is why they have this lovely piece there and they will last you a lot longer if you look after them I hope that the couple of techniques and care that we've given you today will help um, if there's anything specific about tools and stuff that you want to know please leave your feedback in our comments section and we will attend to it later we have unfortunately got load shedding as well on and off i know we've got throughout the country so you all understand our load shedding problem um but we're always happy to help you there are three of us in the team these days so if i'm not available melissa or susie are susie's busy moving house at the moment so it's a little bit chaotic in her house and melissa has three kids at home so it's a bit chaotic in her house but you know what, we remember that we are sharing their, their private family time. They're sharing with us. And for that we are grateful. Um, we will be coming back a bit later on today and doing software. I'm going to try and do live feed. Because live feed is a lot easier for me to deal with. I can also see your comments and the questions and stuff that you're asking. But until a little bit later on, have a super Sunday. Stay safe. And we'll chat a bit later.